Good morning, options traders. Well, as you just saw in my recent post here, we got our first look at GDP for the first quarter of 2020. And no surprises, we are deep in the negative. But it got me thinking that a lot of you might not really understand what GDP is and why it's so important. So let's take a look. So here's the chart from our most recent quarter here, first quarter of 2020, and you can see minus 4.8%, big decline. While there's not really an official definition, most economists follow a general rule of thumb saying that if you have two consecutive quarters of declining GDP, in other words, negative, that you are officially in a recession. So I think it's no surprise that we're going to hit that when the next report comes out. So what exactly is this number? Well, there's really two of them. There's GDP and there's another one called GNP. The US used to mostly report GNP. Now we've gone to GDP, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but GNP is still in the report. If you dig down in there, you'll actually see the GNP numbers as well. But GDP stands for Gross Domestic Product, and GNP is Gross National Product. So regardless of which of these that you use, you can think of it as the nation's report card. It is considered the king of all indicators. This is ultimately what all of the other economic indicators are trying to predict. Where are we heading with GDP? So what is GDP? Well, there's a couple of definitions and they get a little technical, but we'll look at some examples. But first definition, you can say it is the value for all final or all completed or finished goods and services produced in the US or we could say it is the value added for all goods and services in the US. Sounds like the same thing, but it's not. Let me show you an example of why there's a difference here. So let's say that we have, I don't know, let's take a company, maybe Georgia Pacific, that produces trees to you know, create paper and paper goods. So they go out and they cut down a tree and they put a $10 price on it. And they sell this to a processor of some kind who buys it for 10, does whatever that a processor does to it and charges 15. The processor sells it to a mill, mill pays 15, they mill this wood, charge 25 for it. A manufacturer pays 25 and converts it, let's say, into a chair that they sell for 100, and then a retailer buys the chair for 100 and sells it for 200. So one definition is we could say that it is the final goods and services or the completed goods and services here. So right here at the bottom, 200 bucks. So if this was the only item that we produced on our small island economy, our GDP would be 200. It's the final value of the goods and services. Now there's another way we could have calculated it. I could say that in step one here, Georgia Pacific added $10 of value. The processor paid 10 and sold it for 15, so they added $5 of value. Not 15, but they added five. The mill pays 15, sells it for 25, they've added 10. The manufacturer pays 25, sells it for 100, they've added $75 worth of value. The retailer who pays 100 and sells it for 200 adds $100 worth of value. So if you add up this final column here in blue, you'll see that you get 200 exactly the same number as our retailer right here, the end user, $200. So this is why there are two different definitions. I could either say what was the ultimate value of the thing that we produced for the end user, for here the consumer, was 200. Or if I wanted to look at all of the steps in between, I could say what was the value added at each step. Now it should be obvious why we can't say it is the value of all goods and services because then we would get 400 and we would double count. Well, previously I mentioned that there is another related measure called GNP, so what's the difference here? Well, let's start with GDP. GDP is the value for all final goods and services produced in the US, or you could say the value added for all goods and services. But the key word here is in. It has to be within the borders of the US. GNP, on the other hand, is the same idea, value for all final goods and services, but it's produced by the US, regardless of where this company may be located. So for instance, here's our US and we have, let's say, a Nissan plant in Tennessee. It's also another one in Mississippi. It's a foreign firm, Japanese firm, but it's within the borders of the US. So that would get counted toward GDP.
On the other hand, let's say that we have Exxon operating a rig in Russia. Exxon's a US company, but it's operating outside of the borders. So in this case, this Exxon right here would not be counted toward GDP, but it would get counted toward GNP because it's a US company producing regardless of where it's located. So that would get counted toward GNP. So why report one over the other? Well, as I mentioned, the US used to report GNP primarily, and then we switched because really the rest of the world used to report GDP. And the reason is that most countries, especially the smaller ones, get a lot of their value from countries outside operating within their borders. So they wanted to report GDP. For the US, it doesn't really matter. They're almost virtually the same numbers. So we just kind of, to standardize things, mostly report GDP. So how is it calculated? Well, it's calculated by the Bureau of Economic Analysis or the BEA since 1930. And it's done from a fairly sophisticated accounting system called the National Income and Products Account. And basically it just collects samples from government and private sources. So the first thing to understand, the important thing, is that it is a statistical sample. It is not actually looking at every single value of all final goods and services. It's just taking a sample and it's giving an estimate. So every quarter this gets released, but it gets released in stages because it goes through a number of revisions. So let's say we're looking for the first quarter, which is what we just had here. That would be for January, February, March. One month later in April, we get what's called the advance report. That's the one that we just saw. One month after that, we get a second report that used to be called the preliminary. You still might see that term used. A lot of times they just call it the second estimate, but it's just because it will go through revisions. And so they, they're taking the same data, but they get some other data that they might not have had before and they revise it. And then one month after that, you get the third or what's called the final report. So even though GDP is considered the king of all of the economic indicators, the bad thing about it is that it's outdated by the time you get some real information that you can have some confidence in. The final thing to understand is that it is an annual statistic. So GDP is always reported as an annualized figure. So that just means, let's say if we fell 1% this quarter, they would report it as 4% meaning that if we continued at that same rate by the end of the fourth quarter, we would be down 4%. So when you see that it's minus 4.8, it doesn't mean that we fell 4.8% in that quarter. We fell by a fourth of that. It's what's called an annualized figure. And then the final thing to understand is that every year around July, the BEA recalculates GDP again. So once again, by the time you get some real data, it's definitely outdated but it is the most important thing for any country to follow. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better understanding of just how bad the impact of the coronavirus has been. For those who'd like to learn more about the arts and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course and Strategy Lab at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.